So you've got a small group. Oh, wow, a really small group, maybe only one, two or three people. And I get it. You're not happy with all the things that you're perhaps finding online because they seem to all be designed for larger groups. And of course, size of groups is relative, but there is something quite special in my heart when you're designing activities for only one, two or three people. So that's what this video is all about. I'm gonna share with you five, 10 or more different activities that are great for one, two or three people. Small groups are great. I love working with large groups too, but there's something pretty special about small groups. They may lack in energy and size, but they amply make up for it in the levels of quality interaction. And I've got a bunch of favorite activities I wanna share with you that are simple, quick, really easy props to get your hands on that you can use with just one person, maybe two people or even three or four people. That's everything about what I'm gonna be sharing with you here. But first of all, a warning. <laughs> what I'm gonna share with you is just a tiny fraction of what is actually available. And uh, I'll give you some further notes later on in the episode where you can get tons of free resources uh, for many, many dozens of, dozens more activities that are suitable for one, two or three people. Let's kick off with single player games. We're not just going to focus on solitaire. In fact, we're not gonna even mention that at all, but everything I'm gonna share with you here works perfectly well with one person, which means no matter how big a group you're working with, you could use any of these activities with that large group. It just means everyone is kind of working on their own. Here's the first one, teacup stretch. Now I'm not gonna actually use a teacup uh, because I think my wife would be pretty unhappy if I dropped it because you're more than likely going to. It's a challenging activity for one person. I'm gonna use this little beanie baby, my mini, mini, mini milky moo moo. And the idea is as if you had a teacup in your hand, you've got to keep your hand as straight as possible, like it's flat or horizontal as possible. And the idea is you're going to pull it all the way over your head. Ah, no, I didn't get it. But the idea is to be able to go all the way around your body. Notice that my arm is now, is now uh, bent without the teacup falling. Now I would suggest start with a beanie baby or a ball before you move to porcelain objects, but it's really quite challenging. And if you happen to find that pretty easy, then move on to something more difficult. Go on to um, your left hand or a cup of water, many variations, but that's one of my favorites, teacup stretch. Do you like golf? I personally love golf. I've played it probably five times in my life. I don't have a group of friends who play it all the time, which is probably why I never ended up playing it. But you don't have to actually have a huge area in order to enjoy golf. You can actually do it indoors. All you need is a sheet of paper. Now I've done something in advance. I've prepared this in advance, but it starts by first of all, asking each person to create their own little mini golf course. There's a clubhouse, there's three tees, and the key to drawing it, apart from just inspiring lots of creativity, is that you can add whatever you like to it. Trees, bunkers, rivers, bridges, kangaroos, whatever you like. Once you've created your golf course, you can then play. And all you need to do is take a pen, place it on the very first tee, and rather than drawing, you're going to push that pen along the paper. And the ink or the lead of that pen or pencil will only go so far. So as far along as you can see the ink make a mark on the paper, that's your first stroke. Place the pen in that upright position and then push it towards the hole for the second stroke. The idea is you keep going, count the number of times or strokes that it takes you to get to the hole. And as soon as you've pierced the first hole that you've drawn on your golf course, you've completed the first hole. Do that two or three times, or if you really want to, a really large sheet of paper, create an 18 hole golf course, you could knock yourself out. But paper golf, obviously you could do this with two people as well, and you could play on each other's golf course but absolutely suitable for one person. I picked up this next activity from one of my colleagues in the United States, Michelle Cummings. It's called prediction. And I'm gonna tell you, it's probably one of the favorite things we do as a family when we're waiting for our meal at a restaurant. We just pull out the set of cards and get straight into it. Here's the object. Here's my deck of cards, just a regular deck of cards. 
And the idea is that you're going to flick a card once you've shuffled it up one at a time and you have to predict what the next card is not going to be. That's right, you've got to predict what it's not going to be. Now, there's 54 cards in a pack if you include the Jokers, so you'd think there's a 1 in 54 chance of getting it right. It's surprising how often it'll come up. I'm going to do this just for a short while to give you a sense. I'm going to predict it won't be a 4. Oh, close. Won't be a King. Okay, so far so good. I'm still in the game. Won't be a 2. Ah! <laughs> I didn't plan this. That took three goes. The object is you keep going at it and see how far you can get through the pile. I guarantee you, you're going to find it much more challenging than you think it is. In that case, it took only three rounds. In the comments below, let me know how far you get. Do you get all the way through a deck? That's the ultimate aim. I've only ever done it once ever in my life, but most groups maybe get to about the halfway point before they predict the next card. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what your experience is. This next one has lots and lots of variations, but the most simplest form is take any sheet of paper, any sheet of paper, won't matter what its size is, give them 20 sheets of that paper and no other resources. And your objective is to form the tallest paper tower that you can. Wow. Now, when you think of like 20 sheets of paper all stacked together, they don't sit more than maybe a millimeter or two off the ground. So clearly you're going to have to stand them on their edges and do all sorts of things. So I've seen some remarkably tall towers made with just 20 sheets of paper. Now, 20, there's no magic number in that. You could do 10, you could do 30, but 20 works pretty well. I've seen well over 80 centimeters. Uh, has been achieved. Now, clearly you can't use anything else around you uh, in order to be able to suspend that tower. It just needs to sit on a flat surface. It's something you can do on your own, but clearly you can do it in a group context as well. And that's true for all of these single player games is that all of them can be done with small teams or in a whole group with everyone doing their own thing. And if you want more details for all of these, just simply plug in the name to playmeo.com and you can download and access all the step-by-step -step instructions immediately uh, to be able to try this for yourself. So now let's go to games that are suitable for two or three people to make them work. My first game I'm going to share with you is your ad. Um, you start with the two hands behind your back, you're facing a partner. You may be facing three people, but let's say you're with a partner and one person says uh, set. And so you set, that is what you're doing is you're setting a certain number of fingers on the end of your two hands. Having set a certain number of fingers, the next person, the other person says go. At which point you bring out both sets of your hands and both, that is you've got four hands with fingers possibly extended. The first person to add up all of the fingers and get the answer correct wins a point. Best of five rounds or whatever you choose to play. Then you can implement uh, subtraction, multiplication, division gets a little bit tough, but you get the idea. That's the basic form is uh, you can start with just two people or three people or four people, but the basics is each person gets to choose a number. Full disclosure, this next exercise is got to be way high on my list of my top 60 activities. It's called one, two, three. There's probably not been many programs that I've run in the last 10 or 12 years where I have not used this activity. Check out the video in order to be able to understand what's going on, but it's basically a partner facing another person and you're going to count the numbers one, two, three backwards and forwards. So one, two, three, one, two, three, as fast and as accurate as possible. Now, I know just the way that I've shared it with you there, it probably doesn't sound interesting. And I also write books for a living. My latest book had it in it and I, 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 I get it. You look at it and you go, how can counting to three be that much fun? Give it a go. This is called experiential learning, folks. The, the fun is found in the experience. Again, in the comments below, let me know how long do you go before you make a mistake in one, two, three. Let's go to our next activity. And this is, again, one of my all time favorites. You just need a sheet of paper and each person has a pen. And in turns, again, lots of variations, but the generic version is one person starts by drawing without their pen coming off the paper, anything, a curve, a circle, a couple of lines, but the pen must stay on the paper. And they may do it only for five seconds. And then it's the partner's turn. They then have their pen and then they add something to it. 
they do it for about five seconds and then it goes back to the first person and the second person. It keeps going. And the whole idea here is to be able to create a collaborative drawing. Not one person is influencing the result of what's going to happen next. It's fascinating to see what happens. It's really engaging. It's always very fun. And it, you know, if you wanted to work on um, building team skills and focus on collaboration, this is a great activity that can definitely be done with just two people, maybe three people if you wanted to extend it a bit further. And then finally, uh, the next one is the RPS, the rock, paper, scissors. Oh, so many variations. You could write books on it, just different ways that you can use the basic, you know, rock, paper and scissors. But this one is in pairs and it's called rock, paper, scissors, five lives. There are different levels of success and at each time you combat with your partner and you win, it brings your partner down a level. And every time they lose, they go down a level. So do you. If they win, they go up and you go down. You keep playing until eventually someone manages to uh, win five rounds in a go. Now there's some physicality involved with this, so you might need a little bit of room, but it's ultimately a lot of great fun uh, that can be played in another version of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Now it's your turn. Uh, I would love to hear from you. What are some of your favorite activities? You might want to describe them in a little bit of detail so that not only can you share that to the collective wisdom of the world, but I'd love to know as well. I'm always looking for new ideas. So add it in the comments below this video. What's some of your favorite small group, like one, two, three people, small group activities, and then let the rest of the world know. And my promise to you is, as I always make this promise, I will respond. More than likely, I want to know some more details or where have you used it and what type of group have you used it with. And then I'll beg, borrow and steal it and make it part of my repertoire as well. And now for my last minute tip, or in fact, there's two tips. The first one is if you love this stuff and are looking for more ideas, then head along to playmeo.com. But I've already mentioned that earlier, but I want you to understand that there is a completely free way for you to unlock the entire database for seven days. Start a seven day free trial, no opt in, no registration, no credit card in order to be able to see all of the step by step instructions. But if you want to unlock all of the premium content, the video tutorials, the variations, the debriefing tips and so on, then again, it won't cost you a cent, but you'll give up a little bit of that detail and then you can browse to your heart's content. So check that out if you're looking for more activities that are suitable for one, two or three people or indeed any size group. You can use the search engine to find more for that purpose. And finally, as always, while this video is free, part of the price of admission is to be able to invite you to make a comment below. What did you like about this subject? What did you learn from it? What resonated with you? What do perhaps you'd not even agree with? All those other ideas that you have that you would like to share with the rest of the community. So please do that and subscribe to this channel if you loved what we just share. Hit the notification tab so that you get notified every time we upload, more often than not, a weekly video to add to your skills and experience so that you can lead these activities with confidence and ease as well. All right, and as always, I want you to have fun. See you later.